another book recommendation. What book are we focusing on today? Why the rich are getting richer? What is financial education really? And this comes from the godfather of financial education himself, Mr. Robert Kiyosaki, author of the international bestseller, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you haven't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, go read that book. Do yourself a favor. If you call yourself an entrepreneur, you call yourself somebody who wants to be financially free, financially liberated, or you're creating wealth or generational wealth, you have to go read Rich. You see, there's books that those are... Every entrepreneur has had to have read those books. Think and Grow Rich, The Outliers, The Alchemist, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Monk That Sold His Ferrari. Yes, other people recommend other books. Abo Who Moved My Cheese. Abo um, The Mark Nakata. Shout out to VT, my brother, Vusi Tembegwayo. Abo The Art of Hustling. Sell or Surrender, DJ Swoo, about billionaires under construction. There's so many business books out there. And another book I'd like to recommend, actually, it's an old book, but it's a dope book by Gaten McKenzie. It's called The Hustler's Bible. Dope. So there's a lot of entrepreneurship books out there that if you call yourself somebody who's pursuing this generational wealth mission, you have to have either read those books or are planning to read those books. You don't have to go buy physical copies, but you can go listen to the audio um, versions of those books. Okay, as I read it at the back to give you a bit of an idea as to why I'm recommending this book and what it's about, let me first read it and then I'll give you my um, narration or my comments afterwards. Why did school teach you about money? This book is about what school did not teach you. Why savers are losers. Yes, it says why savers are losers. Some of you guys do know on most of my videos, I always say replace save with invest. Yes, save, save, save. Invest, invest, invest. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial pro professional. Go to pro financial professionals, but they'll also tell you the same thing. Investing as opposed to saving in 2023, 2024 is the way to go. Anyways, why savers are losers? Once upon a time, savers were winners. Once upon a time, a saver could save and get rich. Today, savers are losers. Take a look at what happened to the value of savers' savings. And the reason why I say this is because your money keeps on losing value every year. I know that you still have your 100 rand in your pocket, but this very same 100 rand you had before COVID-19, as much as it's still 100 rands today that you have in your hand, it's actually not 100 rands anymore. Today, when you've got 10,000 rands, it's different from when you had 10,000 rands in 2019. 10,000 rands can actually buy you things where in 2019, you can, <laughs> guys, you get what I'm trying to say, right? I guess that's why, you know, he says here, take a look at what happened to the value of savers' savings. In 1970, $1 million in savings at 15% interest equaled $150,000 a year. In 2017, $1 million in savings times 1.5% interest equal $15,000 a year. Crazy. 1970 to 2017, how many years is that? 40 something years, just less than 50 years. Can you imagine? The value of the money has dropped. Yo, 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 yo. Anyway, let me continue reading. I'll only give my comments at the end. Sorry, guys. Today, even a millionaire cannot live on $15,000 a year. Is the fairy tale over? Why the rich are getting richer is about real financial education, not the fairy tale of go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, buy a house, get out of debt, and invest for the long term in the stock market. This book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad's Graduate School. If you are looking for new ideas on how to survive and thrive in the future, this book is for you. 20 years ago, Robert Kiyosaki wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the number one personal finance book in history. That book has challenged and changed the way tens of millions of people around the world think about money. With perspectives on money and investing that often contradict conventional wisdom, Robert Kiyosaki has earned an international reputation for, for straight talk, irreverence, and courage, and has become a passionate and outspoken advocate for financial education. I've been blessed to have met him. I've been blessed to have interviewed him. I've been blessed to have um, spoken alongside him at the Santin Convention Center full of 
5,000 people. Incredible gentleman, full of knowledge, amazing grandfather. Because for me, I've seen a time, he's my grandfather. Because I don't know how old he is now. I think now he's in his 70s. I'm 44 years old. So it's definitely my father. He qualifies to be my, not, not just my father, my grandfather. Because if I'm 44, my father would be 20 years older than me, he would be 64. And then their father would be 80. Oh yeah, he qualifies to sort of be my father. Yeah, maybe it got me late. But yeah, you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? And let's go to the contents of the book. You see, he signed it for me, as you can see. This is after I had interviewed him. See, DJ Smoo, uh, all the best. This was 2017. Dear Smoo, um, thank you. We love you. You see, live, what? Live, take free. Ish. But yeah, I'm blessed to have met the brother. I've met, I've actually spoken alongside him twice. I've interviewed him twice. I've actually met him, I think, three times. And four times I've gone to his talks because all the other times when I've met him, I've listened to him speak. And the other time I had not met him. I think the first time was just me being an audience. It was before I ascended to you know to uh speaking alongside him and bringing those platforms um as prestigious as as he was but i'm just blessed that uh, you know i've met people like these in my life and these are the people that made me change the way i view money change the way i carry my life change the way i operate and um be a a, a an investor as opposed to just uh, a a business person or, or or just anybody that is just pursuing generational um wealth um yeah, this is a book that I'd like to recommend. Go check it out. It's an awesome book. This is one of the things that I like um, talking about. He talks about this diagram. Let me show you first, and then I'll explain after. Check this out. See, if you look at this, it's a quadrant, right? It's E-S-I-B. E, it's a diagram that explains who cannot do what we do, right? People who say you can't do this here are most often E's, those are employees, and S's, small business owners, or specialists, such as doctors or lawyers who have to be there for their practice to operate, or they're self-employed. People like real estate agents, web designers, and hairdressers, where when you're not there, your business cannot thrive, so you fall in the S quadrant. So employee quadrant, S block, and then the B is big business. It says here, looking at this diagram again, you may get a better idea of why some people say you can't do this here and why some people are doing it. And then he puts here, for example, he says E, and then he puts Barack Obama, and then he says S, Hillary Clinton, and then he says B, Donald Trump and Mitt Romney. And remember, when he wrote this book, I think it was 2015, 2016, so this is when these people were in government. And then the I quadrant is the investor quadrant. He says the B quadrant stands for big business, businesses with 500 employees or more. The I quadrant represents professional investors. This is something you'll have to learn. When you read this book, it'll show you this beautiful, beautiful diagram that'll just simplify your life and just give you the light if you've never had it, if you did not read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if you have not been exposed to his type of content or his type of message and his type of education or if you have not read this book this is a diagram every entrepreneur needs to understand and know esbi employee self-employed big business investor quadrant so i mean i'm glad that now one has worked very hard in their life where we're corporatizing this business now it's getting into the b space it started with us being employees of it being everything, being receptionists, being drivers, being sales agents, being street hustlers, selling it in the streets, selling the vision, posting about it, we E here. We did everything, myself and Spear, my business partner and our other partners. And then we moved into self-employed, where we were self-employed. It's self-employing us. Without us, the business would have collapsed. But today I can sit here and podcast while the guys are busy at the office running because over the years, we've built this thing, put in systems and processes, reinvested the money into hiring the great minds who have built companies like Abu Coca-Cola, Abu Red Bull, Abu Monster to come and work at Mofire and we pay them top dollar to make sure that they take 
take this thing to where the vision is, to what we want it to become. Because you remember, myself and Spiro have never built anything like this. Spiro comes from the mining background. I come from the entertainment background. So as we hustled, not knowing what we were doing in the beginning, but we had the vision as the entrepreneur, you always have the vision, but you always try and bring the people, the right people around you that are going to help see this vision to fruition. It was us. It was the story of us as well. We did the same. But as you make that money as well, you start remembering that this is not my money. Like the mistakes that one has done in the past. Now you're starting to learn, this is not my money. We're not even going to take any dividends for the next couple of years. We're just going to keep reinvesting into growing this business such that it starts being able to afford um, its own trucks, manufacturing, um, factory, um, the right skills for the people who are highly educated who understand this business, but all the experience that is needed to take this thing to where it's supposed to go to. And then that's when now it's becoming the B. It's becoming a big business. We're corporatizing it. And then the I is when this thing is so big that now it keeps on yielding all those dividends for all the shareholders and then they can invest the money for wherever, to whatever they want to invest it in or in whatever they want to invest it in. And that's where every entrepreneur wants to be in the I quadrant. That's why I always give props to people who are in crypto and forex and those who, are, who understand it and who take their time in educating themselves and who don't scam people. But... The reason why I've got so much respect for them is because as soon as you become a forex trader, you're already an investor by default. As soon as you start participating in crypto, you're already an investor by default. So investing is important. That's why lately one talks about crowdfunding and stock fails. And one is talking about real estate because investments are important. That's the game that you want to be in. That's what Robin Kiy Robert Kiyosaki says. But this is the quadrant that you want to be in, the I quadrant. So this is a dope book, guys. I recommend it. Go check it out. I wish you guys all of the best. What are some of the books that you think um, or that you would, you would also like to recommend to one another? You can write them on the comment section. But this is a dope book. He is an incredible gentleman. He's got a YouTube channel. You can subscribe. Go listen to his teachings. He talks a lot about financial education education and he's been the most amazing teacher to millions and millions if not hundreds of, mil of millions of entrepreneurs all over the world i hope you're going to enjoy the book i actually know that you will enjoy the book if you haven't read it before it's a book you have to expose yourself to and read that knowledge because it's going to change your life i'll see you guys on tomorrow's video the 5am club have a great day guys and be productive today thank you